Please welcome the author of Friday Evening, Enjoying La Dolce Vita, one, Creating La Dolce Vita, One Bite at a Time, Ms. Michelle Carboni. Yeah. <laughs> My book, as David started to say, is really not a cookbook. It's a recipe for changing your life so that you maintain a more sustainable lifestyle and that your relationships with your food, your family, your kitchen, the people who provide the food for you, after a year of laughing your way through my culinary adventures of getting to this point, I'm hoping that you'll all embark on your own sustainable culinary adventure. So what I'm gonna do tonight in this small, non-kitchen area is show you how to make chicken cacciatore. How many people buy whole chickens, cut them up? You, you're familiar with that. No one person, right? So you know. They're usually cheaper when you buy them this way, and they come with bones, but the flavor is in the bones. So when you start with boneless chicken breasts, You've already given away some space on your planet for the refuse, but you've also given away half the flavor of the animal. So I have a good knife, which I recommend you get, and I talk a lot about the kitchen utensils and things needed. And please pass those around if everyone on the, wants to have one, I appreciate it. So we're gonna cut up a chicken. Grab that mother by the leg, find that thigh bone, and just go in there and cut. Break it up, find the joint, take your knife, Cut right in there. Now you at least have a leg and a thigh. Same thing, and gravity can help you. So I like to hold stuff up in the air. Go right in, find the thigh, break that joint, cut the guy off. Pick up the chicken, pick it up by the wing, look for that armpit, wing pit. There's chicken wing. This is not hard. You spend money paying a butcher to do this for you. And half the time, you know, you pay them to take the bones out. And then you pay them to buy the broth that comes in a little container that you would have had for free. So this method of cooking helps you save a little money in your kitchen. Okay, now you have the carcass. And look, there's, sometimes you get the parts, which is a good thing. We'll put those there for later. Now to the boneless chicken breast that everyone is afraid to try on their own. But look how simple it is. You go right down the breastbone, stick your thumb in there, pull it apart, I did bring band-aids, so keep your fingers crossed. So now I'm going in that joint again. I've separated my leg from the thigh. This is not hard, and you know, I recommend you guys try it. You know what I've done wrong my whole life? When I cut up a chicken, you went on either side of the breastbone, yes? Yeah. I just hacked down the middle, which always like doubles my knife, and, and, and I can't do it. And you so I was trying to separate it that way, so I'm an idiot. Well, I mean, a cookbook will tell you, cut that, but that's hard to do, and you got to be strong. Sometimes well, you have a really sharp knife, and if you slip, then your finger's laying there, you know, and I you know. don't want to have that. So you just but go on, you kind of feel on either side of the I, I just took, yeah, just okay. stick, half the time you need your thumb in there, and you can pull the meat away. So to do this dish now, we need um, a little seasoning, well, seasoning is good, right? So we're going to season the meat, and I'm using just regular it's like kosher salt, I think. You know, there's a million salts out there. Pick your best. But for your average cooking, you want it just to be a good basic salt. If, if you don't own a pepper grinder, that should be one. Next to a knife, that's one of the most important things you should have is a means to get freshly ground pepper onto your foods. So a little seasoning. Now, I'm going to also take, this is just Italian herb. that You get it at any grocery store. We'll put a little bit of that on there. I really want people to start, look, stop looking at recipes and start looking at what do you like, what do you want to have. I'm going to cut these guys in half a little bit, otherwise we'll all be fighting over them later. Um, look at what is in your refrigerator, which would be pro properly stocked, and then build your meals around what you have and what you see at the market that looks fresh today. That's really the secret to good, to good cooking. And now in this bag, I have just some seasoned flour, salt, pepper, a little bit of the herb. And you know, you can do this in a pan or a dish, but I came all the way from Santa Barbara, so I'm just kind of quickly putting everything in there to get some level of flour in it. You can do this dish without flour. The flour helps, and also I'm trying to make this somewhat cleaner here. A lot of people don't like working with chicken because it messes up their their uh, kitchen, and if I had left the paper down, which I intended to do, then I could have wrapped it all up, and most of my surface would be clean. So I'm going to make sure everything's hot before we eat any of it, and we're going to make sure um, 
we keep things as good as we can. Okay, so before I start the chicken, and this is it, you can do it either way. You can do your meats first or your vegetables first. I'm going to just start with some of the chopping up. Most dishes in my cookbook and in many cuisines start with a sofrito, basically onion, some form of onion, carrot, and celery. So you can have, like I saw these, I thought, God, those onions look great. I'll bring them down to LA and share them with everybody. Typically, there's this. You know, you know what a red onion is. You can use any onion you want. One of the most important things is having a good knife and to cook like this, learning some chopping techniques so that you're not chopping your fingers, you're really chopping. Um, and I am an engineer by background, so I really looked at how do, they, how do they do that so fast on TV? And one of the ways is just doing it systematically, making a flat edge, figuring out what shape you're going for, and then chopping away. So let's say this dish, and cacciatore, it's not a stew, you're really building a sauce. So you don't want gigantic pieces, but it doesn't matter. If you don't have a lot of time, cut the pieces big. Now this is gonna go in the soup. Now let's get something frying, because I know you guys came to get to see some cooking. So we're gonna start with a little onion. We'll get that going. And let's throw some salt in with it. Season as you go along. That much onion needs about that much salt. You can't add the salt at the end. You've already cooked your foods in. So, well, I found a leek. The leek looks good too, so let's put some leek in. What's the best way to clean the leek? Under running water. Slice it right up. See, I had to clean this before I came because I didn't want to open up a whole thing of sand. So I sliced it right up the middle and I went through every one under the running water and got all the sand out. And I'm not doing the very bottom with you anyway, so this top part, I'm still going to put in the soup. This looks better to me down here. Now watch this. You want to chop something? Keep it together. Keep it attached to the root. I'm slicing down there vertically. Then I'm just going to hold it all together. Keep your fingers in. Go down the middle. Now you have some wheat. So what's next on the list? Well, after I've got this stuff sauteing, and you can add a little pepper. I'm going to add some celery. Now, this is something that I found in celery. You may know how to do this already, but it's very easy to do. I'm not going to use the whole bunch, but I like the leaves. I'm just going to slice down this head of celery. It's going to help me do my chopping later, and I'm going very fast and probably will cut myself. And then I'm going to chop off some of these pieces at the end. Nobody said you got to cut one rib at a time. This holds itself together. I'll put this right back in the refrigerator. I'll use it again later. Here's our celery. Some pieces are a little big because I didn't chop the end very well. well. Let's get some celery in there. Anybody get hungry? <coughs> Any questions? Pretty easy, huh? I haven't even got to the chicken part yet. What we're doing is we're building the sauce. And what I'm going to do is take that out and then fry the chicken. 